I'm Dr. Tadeusz Radziwowski. Uh, welcome to our program today. We have an excellent program. We have two people from Europe, part of the ECON, European Community Organizing Network program. One is Paul Cromwell, who is the overall organizer. And in a special treat, we have uh, Ms. Dag Dagmara Kubik from Katowice, from the organization Bona Fides, which is pioneering work of building grassroots democracy in Poland, uh, teaching people to do the very kinds of things that Polish immigrants had to do when they first came here, how to organize themselves, how to create communities, and most important of all, how to become effective in our society. They're, they're here to learn from us, but also I think we can learn from them. Uh, this is a new and exciting adventure for them and we're several generations removed from that original experience of ours. And so, as a way of making a tie between the Polish community here and the new experience of the Polish community in Poland, uh, I think this is a wonderful program. So, my name is Dagmara Kubik, as you can see. Uh, I am community organizer in Poland, in Katowice. Uh, and I am coordinator of um, community organizing program as well. And I'm vice president of, of the association from the May last year. So I'm fresh vice president. Um, and I am also part of European community organizing network where Paul, where Paul works. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm there, I'm part of coordinating team. And this is my role there. Uh, so what I would like to do today um, is to show our, tell you a little bit about Katowice, what's going on there right now, to tell you something about community organizing and community organizing in Poland, in Katowice specifically. So this is, this is, this is the goal for today. And then Paul will tell you something about ECON and our work on European level. I am Vice President of Bonafides Association. Uh, my association do the walk, watchdog activities and it means that uh, we are uh, checking what City Hall is doing. And so we are around 10 years right, right now. And for seven years, we were doing watchdog activities. And we realized that um, it is working only for us. I mean, the City Hall started to uh, ask about our opinion. They uh, was giving us um, uh, public information, but not to the ordinary people. It was just like, uh, just like to us. So. Uh, and then there is something which we use in Europe, uh, not in the United States, I guess. Uh, it's building an uh, organization. Uh, we realize that in Europe uh, it's hard for people to build something. Um, I've heard that in the US you have it in your blood. When you're when you born you have this building organization. Uh, I'm not sure if it's true, but for Europe it's true that we don't do that. And we have to put a lot of work to build something. Community organizing in Katowice. Um, I started my work in 2011, uh, and I was the first community organizer in Poland. I really like to say that because I'm proud of it, that I, I brought community organizing to Poland. It's not really true, um, because solidarity is something like organizing. I mean, I can s see so many similarities to, to or organizing to uh, solidarity. Um, but um, I really like what Dr. Tadeu said at the beginning, that um, at some point we forget what, what does it mean to be united and what does solidarity mean. And what we are doing is to bring it back. Um, and in the middle, there is a picture from um, the first account accountability session we, uh, we did in Poland. Uh, it was around parking lots. Um, it w um, we had like promise from the president that he will build parking lot. Uh, it, it wasn't written. We, what we wanted to do is we put um, the board with words yes or no. Um, and ask him to, to sign that, but he refused it. So it, it, it wasn't working, but he said he promised to give us a parking lot. I started organizing because I met with Paul Cromwell, who is here, and Chuck here, and other people from, um, from European Community Organizing Network. That was my first uh, meeting with community organizing. And without the network, it would, wouldn't be possible for us to do that because we didn't have knowledge, we didn't have um, resources, to do that um, and we s all, all I know about community organizing and social change is, is from the network so this is something very important in, in, in my work. 
Um, I just would like to share with you a little bit about the larger network that Dagmata is a leader within and her organization is a part of. And then I would just like to tell one organizing story that might give you a feeling about how this process works. Um, so let me just give you a little bit of background information, maybe a little hard to read, but our network was begun in 2008. We currently have 14 member organizations, which really are more like networks, because there's over 25 organizing projects in nine countries, Bosnia, Bulgaria, Germany, Hungary, Moldova, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, and Ukraine. <coughs> About a year ago, we counted how many people are active in this work in those nine countries and realized we have 175 core active leaders and over 7,000 people participated in some sort of event in that particular year and those numbers are growing. They were able to get the city council to vote 1.1 million euros, that would be about 1.5 million dollars to build this brand new footbridge. Not to destroy the, well, they did destroy the old one to replace it with a brand new one. So that's a infrastructure improvements in neighborhoods. Germany also has an urban renewal program from the federal level, but it's often a top-down program. And with community organizing in this city of uh, Bosweiler, they were able to really listen to what do the residents want. So they were building, they built new parks, a community center, and these were some of the public meetings where they met with public officials to share their uh, impressions. The one story is this woman here, Sophia Ursel, is our community organizing colleague in Cantemir, Moldova. And of course, Moldova is in the news these days given what's going on in Ukraine and the threats, etc. Sophia is one of the smallest people I know, but big heart and incredible courage. She came to some workshops we did on community organizing and said, Paul, this is what we need in our village of about 10,000 people in Cantemir, Moldova. She went out and did 70 visits with residents in the area, and their first project was what I would call a self-help project. And what I mean is, they gathered volunteers, they did fundraising among the villagers, and they went and painted the uh, elementary school cafeteria, which was run down, so it's a beautiful. But she comes to me and says, Paul, I know what we just did is not typical community organizing, meaning working with or sometimes putting pressure on the government to change things. But she said, Paul, here in Moldova, I had to help give people a volunteer experience because under communism, you were forced to do volunteerism. I wanted to bring people to, together to show them you can do this from your own free will and make improvements. I said, I trust you, Sophia, keep going. So from a large group of people, then they found 11 volunteers who went out and did 200 visits with residents. And the main theme they had was this. Most people in Cantemir live in tall apartment buildings, those old Soviet-style apartment buildings. And the way you would deal with your garbage is there would be a three-sided fence outside the apartment building You'd put your garbage on the ground. There were no containers. And then, of course, when the wind came or the dogs came, that garbage was everywhere. And it's not only dirty, but also very unsanitary. So the citizens began to meet with the mayor. Let me find that picture here. Not a great picture, but the gentleman in the blue shirt, this was a negotiating meeting they had with the mayor. And they went to the mayor, and just a background story, and that is community organizing in the United States has been happening for now about 70 or 80 years. It's a, a, a long tradition. But the thing that, I, that we deal with here is that there's plenty of things discouraging people from having a voice here uh, or feeling disenfranchised here, even no matter where you live. People in De Detroit, people, I was with, in Grand Rapids this morning, and, People in Grand Rapids say, well, we don't really have much of a voice. So uh, we are doing similar work here in Michigan. It's fantastic to be 
hooked up with Virginia and Dr. Uh, with the Piast Institute because I think our values are the same. We lo we're learning stuff from uh, Dr. and Virginia about the original Black Polish Alliance in the 70s, which was really important. It was, it was kind of historical, but we've forgotten those things. And meanwhile, as people move out of Detroit into the suburbs, people lose their connections, they lose their land, they lose, they really lose a lot of the people that they count on for democracy. I would just again like to uh, second what Bill has said. Uh, this is really important. Uh, it's important for us as well as for what's going on in Europe. Um, our communities here in America really, I mean, we're separate, we're, we, we've been going for several generations, but we can't continue unless we maintain some kind of tie, some understanding of what's going on in our ancestral homelands. Now, we remember the old folk dances, we remember the, the village our grandparents talked about, but there's a new Poland, an exciting new Poland. There's an exciting new Slovakia, and we hope and pray that Ukraine will follow to create a genuine democracy in, in, uh, uh, in East Central Europe. And so there's much we can learn back and forth, not just in organizing, but just to build those ties. I am the director, my name is Bill O'Brien, I'm the director of the Harriet Tubman Center for Organizing, and we uh, have a network across Michigan of community organizing. And I want to tell you that the, the joy and the gift of working with the Piast Institute uh, has been fantastic. Actually, it was the European Community Organizing Network that brought us together with the Piast Institute and Dr. Razlowski and Virginia Skinars. I We are thrilled to be working with the Piast Institute. My name is Paul Cromwell. I work with the European Community Organizing Network as a community organizing trainer and consultant in uh, Germany and um, we have nine total countries in Central and Eastern Europe that are a part of our network. And the European Community Organizing Network has developed a wonderful relationship with the Piast Institute, especially with its director, Thaddeus Radulowski. They have been so supportive in the first and main thing has been introducing us to Polish Americans here in the Detroit, Chicago, Washington DC areas. And we are very excited about the possibility of connecting the work we are doing in Central and Eastern Europe. My name is Yulana Kushner. I'm the president of the Ukrainian American Civic Committee of Metropolitan Detroit. And I would just like to take this moment to thank the Polish people in the Detroit area, as well as Polish people in Poland, for understanding the situation that Ukraine is in and for being supportive and super supporting Ukraine and Ukrainians. Thank you. Nazywam się Dagmara Kubik, pochodzę z Polski, mieszkam i pracuję w Katowicach, w regionie Silesia. Pracuję dla Stowarzyszenia Aktywności Obywatelskiej Bonafides z Katowic. Jestem tutaj w Stanach po to, żeby, żeby uczyć się z jednej strony, a z drugiej strony też, żeby nawiązywać relacje i pokazywać to, co się dzieje w Polsce. Dzieją się bardzo ważne rzeczy i, i, i zachęcamy ludzi do tego, żeby się dowiadywać, jak można prowadzić taką rzeczywistą, realną społeczność. Zmiany. Jestem bardzo wdzięczna, że mogę tutaj być. Bardzo się z tego cieszę i bardzo dużo wynoszę z tej wizyty. Szczególnie chciałam podziękować Piast Institute za gościnność, za wszystkie możliwości, które mamy. Również Harriet Tubman Center, którzy również nas goszczą. Mamy nadzieję na przyszłą współpracę.